What's up everyone? My name is Pete Coco. I am a headshot and portrait photographer with a studio in New York. And in today's video, I'm going to show you the best autofocus settings for taking portraits with a Canon EOS R5 or R6. So if you've been following my videos on YouTube, you know that I picked up a Canon R5 about four or five months ago. And I did a quick video on the learning curve of going from a 5D Mark III to an R5. One of the things that I concluded was that the learning curve was not as daunting as I thought it would be. And I was able to use the camera within a couple of days or even a day, I was shooting professional headshots with it and portraits and doing my work. But now that I've had the camera for a while, I've really spent some time working through the autofocus system. One thing I will say is that the autofocus system in this camera really is um, a night and day difference from a 5D Mark III or an older camera. And I find myself using it very differently than I did in the past. And so I hope that uh, this will benefit you as well, whether you had the camera already for a while or you're brand new to it and you're just looking for new ways to get the most out of it. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is the autofocus operation. Now, if you look at the autofocus menu, number one, first option, we have two, two operation uh, selections we can do. We can use it in one shot or in servo mode. Now, autofocus operation, you should not confuse that with autofocus method, okay? Autofocus operation, all it pertains to is when the camera will fire the shutter. So either the camera, if you're set to one shot, will only fire the shutter when focus lock is achieved, or if you put the camera in servo mode, servo AF, uh, which in the older cameras was called AI focus, the camera will fire the shutter whether or not it has a focus lock. So the first thing I'm gonna tell you that's really changed for the way that I shoot is that I'm using the camera now almost exclusively in servo AF. If you come from the film world like me, and you remember the old days of like a camera with just a handful of focusing points, you're probably like, I'm not gonna do that. Because in the old days, the uh, AI focus is which, what it was called, was very unreliable. Uh, there was a lot of hunting from the autofocus system. You get a lot of blurry shots. But with this new camera, with the R5 and R6 series, this is so good that I actually prefer it now to shooting in one shot. So although literally up until the time I, I had my um, 5D Mark III, I only have shot in one shot and now I find myself leaving it in servo. So that's the first thing, if you're doing portraits, if you're doing kid photos, if you're doing that kind of stuff, go ahead and try it in servo mode. And I'll, I'll explain a little bit more why as we go. Okay, so now, Again, AF operation, that's different than the AF method. Now, one of the things that was very daunting to me at first when I got this camera was going in here and seeing all of these autofocus methods. They really give you a lot of options, um, but I'm gonna simplify it for you. Um, I find myself personally not using any of them outside of the first two modes. And so let's talk about those and I'll explain why. So first, the most common method I use, and if you're, use, if you're doing portraits, definitely you wanna use tracking. Now tracking, if we go into tracking, um, basically what the camera will do is track the subject. Now the reason I like using tracking in conjunction with servo AF is because if you're in the servo mode, you can have your finger depressed halfway on the shutter button and the camera will continue to track the subject and in fact, it'll give you a group of little blue focusing squares on your subject showing you that it tracks. So it's always keeping it in like super sharp focus and then you can just take a bunch of bursts and they're all or almost all gonna be sharp. Um, if you have it on tracking and you have it on single shot, one shot, the problem is you need to take the photo and then the camera will reset and want to achieve a brand new focus lock. So this is why I'm now using it in servo. Uh, because if you're out taking kid pictures or if you're uh, doing um, weddings or portraiture and you want to be able to just fire the shutter off in, in a burst, 
this is the way you want to do it. So try that out. Let me know what you think of, of shooting it in this method. I've, I've really, it's blown me away how great it is working uh, in this method. Okay, so let's, let's talk about the tracking method a little bit more. So now the camera will give you options in here. So if we go down, so I'll come back to this menu, but we'll go down and it'll give you the subject to detect. Now clearly we're doing portraits, we wanna detect people, but you can also detect animals, vehicles, or none. So I don't know why you would use none, but if we're tracking and we're portrait photographers, obviously we leave it on people. The next mode is eye detection. So the eye detection you want to enable. So what this will do is not only will it track your subject's face, if it's a person, but then it'll even more sensitively track the eye. Um, and there's a way you can activate and deactivate this with um, if you set one of the custom buttons. Uh, so for instance, what I did is I set the little star button on the back of the camera to be my custom button that will allow me to turn on and off the eye control um, when I want to or switch between faces. So that's another little hack to kind of improve your hit rate. Okay, so let's go back to the AF methods and then I will, I'll talk a little bit more about the methods and then we'll go through, I'm gonna go through a bunch of the menus and just let you know kind of how I have it set. So, um, like I said before, I'm not using the camera um, on any of these modes, um, but I'm gonna explain them a little bit here. Tracking is my number one mode and then my second favorite mode to use is spot AF. So this is the most sensitive focusing point you can use. It it's, means that the camera will uh, have the autofocus focus on a spot that's even a little bit more sensitive than a normal 1 AF point, which would be this option, 1 point AF. But for portraiture, um, when I'm mostly gonna focus on someone's eye, but even when I'm doing more general photography, I want the focusing system to be really as fine-tuned as possible. So I would say either use one of these two options and then if you look at the rest of these options, basically as you go down the line, all the camera is doing differently is it's increasing the size of the space that the camera will focus on. So you have, you have spot AF, the smallest size. Then you have one point, which basically is one point that you can focus on. Then it starts to expand the area so you have a larger, you know, larger clusters of focusing points that the camera will use. And then you have zone AF. You have a normal zone, and then you have a large zone for vertical or horizontal. So that these zones are only letting the camera use a wider portion of the focusing points. And I just don't see a need for them. I think that um, all of this can be accomplished by using the first couple of modes and you'll have more or less of the, of the frame and focus depending on the depth of field and the aperture you're using. Uh, if you have found a really great reason to use some of these other modes, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear how you're working the camera, but certainly for what we're doing portrait work, we don't need any of that. All right, so let's go back to tracking and then we're gonna go down our menu. So we have servo AF, we have tr uh, tracking, detect people, eye detection enabled. And now the next option in the first menu is continuous AF. I personally leave this disabled. Some people like the continuous AF. All this means is that the camera, uh, when you turn it on, it'll constantly focus um, all the time. So I don't like that because it's gonna waste the battery faster and the camera's gonna constantly be hunting for the focus. And if you're using an older lens, like I have some older lenses I use, they're a little noisy. Um, it's just gonna annoy you hearing that zzz, 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 you know, that sound it makes when it's hunting. Uh, but that you can kind of do what you want with it. I don't think it's necessary, especially because when you pick the camera up and you push the button, um, the focus is almost instant anyway. And then the last setting in the first menu is touch and drag AF settings. And this also is very cool and I do use this for portrait work. So basically, um, you wanna enable touch and drag. And then the positioning I have set to relative, which um, to the best of my knowledge, just lets you move the focusing point around easier. 
um, and kind of have more control over just putting your thumb on the screen and sliding it around. The Absolute seems to kind of want to control where the point is a little bit more. So I find relative to work better. And now you can choose which part of the frame you want to activate the touch focus. So basically what I've done is I have the right side of the screen um, to control the touch focus. So what this means is that you can literally just put your finger, your thumb on the back of the screen and automatically the camera will put a focusing point where your thumb is and then you can just slide your thumb across the back of the screen and it's gonna focus where you are. Now, I don't use this as much as I use the multi-controller on the back of the camera and the only reason why is because your thumb kind of will be hitting up against your nose if you're like me and you like to shoot with the camera at eye level. Um, if you have the camera out here, obviously this is a great way to use the autofocus. You just put your thumb on there and it'll let you slide it around. So all this is saying is which part of the screen do I want to touch to activate it? So I don't recommend having the whole, you know, the bottom or the, or the left side of the screen or the whole panel because then you might inadvertently touch it and, and start the focusing. So I like it to the right because then my shutter thumb, which is on the right side, is going to be doing the work. Okay, so that's basically your first menu, and that's more or less how I have my settings for taking portraits. But I wanna go through the rest of the menus a little bit. I'm not gonna go over everything, um, but I just wanna go through some of the options that I've been using that I find to be very helpful. Now, in autofocus menu number two, we're not gonna look at this because this is more or less for manual focusing, and um, I'm definitely not manually focusing for portraits 99% uh, of the time, and I don't think you are either. But the only thing you want to make sure of in the second menu is you want to make sure that the AF assist beam is disabled. If you have that enabled, if you're in a dark room or you're somewhere where there's not a lot of light or contrast, the camera will fire off, fire off an infrared light at the subject to help it achieve focus. Now, the problem with this is that if you're um, at a wedding or in a church or you're um, you know, at a conference or a concert um, where there's like a performer on stage in a very quiet part of the performance, you don't wanna be firing uh, infrared lights at them. So definitely disable that. The other thing is the autofocus system in this camera is so good that I, I don't think you would ever need it, uh, but that's what you wanna do there. Now, this third menu is the case for Servo AF, the different cases. So case just means basically shooting circumstance. So the camera gives you four different circumstances and really they all will change the way the camera responds depending on the subject. So I've been using the camera basically in setting number one. So what I did was I changed the sensitivity of the tracking and I lowered it so that it's locked on. So I would say give that a try, see if that works for you. But basically this is how I've been using it um, case number one, which is multi-purpose, tracking sensitivity, and I have it set to really lock on. Then you have other modes here, continuous tracking for different kinds of objects and subjects. So this is, these are all depending on, um, depending on the kind of thing you're, you're photographing. Or I've heard some people say that the auto setting works well. I haven't tried it really that much in the auto myself, uh, but that would be the other thing I would say. If you're not sure about the circumstance, try it in auto. Uh, the camera is really intelligent. The autofocus works that well. That, that might be a great way to do it. But for portraiture, for kids and things like that, I want it to be sticky. Uh, I want it to really track the person that I'm pointing it at. All right, so moving right along, we're in menu number four now. Uh, I'm going to skip the first one because that's really for manual focusing. We're not going to talk about that. Uh, one shot AF release priority, you want to leave that as is on focus. Switching track subjects, um, I leave this at the default setting one. Lens drive when AF is impossible. I leave this on continue focus search because this will mean the camera will continue to try and focus on a subject. It will go back and forth to focusing until it locks. Unless you're using a real super telephoto lens with a long focusing range, um, you can leave this where it is. Now this one is very important. This is limit AF methods. So what you can do in this menu is you can check or uncheck 
the focusing methods you want to be able to access on the fly. So what I've done is I really deactivate all of these because I don't use them. Now why do that? Well, the less of these options you have selected, the quicker you'll be able to cycle through them when you're going through on the menu, on the quick menu or uh, when you're using the buttons to access the focusing system. So the more you have selected, you don't want to be scrolling through all these different options that you're never going to use. So this will make it faster to switch. And I leave this as it is, AF method selection control. I leave that as the multifunction dial. Uh, this is the button in the front of the camera you can push to just change it. And then I leave the orientation linked AF point the same for both vertical or horizontal. So now we're in the fifth menu of the autofocus system. So let's talk about this. The first option you have is initial servo AF point, and it'll say, do you want it set for tracking or do you want it set for all the different modes? Um, so what this means is when you switch between the modes, do you want the focusing point to stay in the same spot it was at? So I like to put it on the second mode because then when I select the focusing point, it stays where it is as I cycle through the modes. Um, some people like using this in auto, so give that a try too. Focusing ring rotation, you can have it either focus one way or the other, depending on your preference, I leave that as it is. We'll skip this for now, because it's manual focus. Now this is an important one too. This is the sensitivity of the AF point when you're using the multi-controller. Now, I actually have been having great success having this on plus. So that means, so you can have it move slower, normal, or faster. So the multi-controller is this little dial here in the, where your thumb is. And when you have it, you can have it move faster or slower. So I like it on the second mode because I like it moving a little fast like that. And it's, it's been working really well for me. And remember that if you move the focusing point around, all you have to do is just press press it in to return it to the center frame. And then you have uh, some more manual options. All right, so that's basically it. That's how I set my camera for portraiture. Uh, there's one other thing besides the autofocus system that I recommend you do if you're doing a lot of portrait work. So you wanna go into your drive mode. Get back in there for a second. And you wanna set it to, I don't put it on the high, high speed or even the regular high speed continuous because it's so many frames that um, you're using a lot of memory. And if you're taking kind of stationary portraits, I feel like that's overkill. But I do like to put it on the low speed continuous because the low speed continuous in conjunction with servo AF and face tracking with eye detection really is an awesome recipe for getting amazing portraits that are sharp, that are crisp, that are beautiful. So this is the uh, recommended mode I would use. If you've found a way that you like, that you think is better, or that you do a little differently, or if this has worked for you, let me know in the comments below. And once again, I appreciate everyone checking out these videos. I really enjoy doing this, and I'm glad that people are getting something out of them. Uh, this will be my last video for 2021. So here's wishing everyone a very happy holiday season. Happy New Year. I'm looking forward to better days in 2022. And don't forget to hit the like button for me and subscribe to my channel. And everyone, I'm wishing you the best for the last couple of days of 2021. All right, bye everybody.